You guys are great, you know, and I just welcome you to my show. Um, you know, where do I begin with Eric here? Uh, we got like a film resume of like 500 in like 75 movies. Might be one of the biggest, most stacked resumes of all time. Eric, thank you for coming on, buddy. Of course, it's great to be here, man. You you look like my uh, my son's house with your with your guitar in the background. Yeah, there. like Keaton. It looks like Keaton's house. I was gonna bring Keaton up. I know that you guys are music lovers, and Eric, you actually play piano. I was doing some research on YouTube. I didn't realize that. No, 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 no. You no, do no. a little. No, I, I do. She plays the piano. I go plunk plunk. You know. <laughs> so not- Eliza, you're a player. Yes. But yeah, not, neither of us are anything like Keaton, you know, or you. But um, but but yeah, and you can bring him up all you want. Your accent is so comforting to me because I'm from New York, and we were supposed to be there shooting, yeah. and then the pandemic happened, and oh, you know. I was gonna ask how are you guys all holding up during the pandemic. What are you guys doing to stay healthy and have fun? Well, it's an evolution. You know, first it's a vacation. You know, I'm always working. So hey, vacation. Hey, let's stay home for a while, and then it's like and. People are dying. What? And then, and then you start feeling bad, and then you start feeling scared, and then you start feeling scared for your people, and it's it just it's a it's a domino effect of of um, not anything that you can put your finger on. It's just discomfort. Yeah, what we've been trying to do is just kind of hit the reset button on life, reconnect with passions. Like I've been recording a lot of music, hanging out with the family, playing board games, spending time like like you know. Yourself, I love my girl as much. I tell you, love Eliza big time, and I think it's so amazing. And my girlfriend was actually commenting on that when she was watching Ridiculousness the other day, and you were fantastic on the show. She's like, "Wow, he really loves his wife." I'm like, "Yes, he does." So <laughs> it's easy for us to all get along because we all like each other, you know. But I know some people are having problems because they don't get along as well at home. Yeah, everybody says don't. You know, don't take any action based on that, though, because, you know, we're not designed to be um, to be together 24 hours a day without any options. And, you know, that whole kind of being you know, kind of drifting away and, and back together is natural. And it's really, you know, it really supports a relationship. So everybody just needs to kind of put all that on hold and figure it out when life comes back. <laughs> right. Whatever it's going to look like. And, and so in reconnecting with, uh, you know, my old passions, I put on the best of the best two the other day. All right. I love 80s and 90s martial arts movies. I'm a big combat sports guy. And my girlfriend's daughter comes in. She's 11 and she's watching the movie. And she's like, this movie's fantastic. I'm like, right. It's my favorite martial arts movie ever. And we'll take a deep dive into it in a moment. It's so far ahead of its time. Eric, you're amazing in it. And my girlfriend's daughter loved your outfits. She's like, they're starting to actually tuck T-shirts back into jeans. And I didn't know that. And I'm like, oh, I might start doing that. That's a good look. Eric, what's your experience with Best of the Best Part 2, if you don't mind me asking? Best of the Best Part 2, they said to me, uh, okay, we want you to do something very different in this one. We want you to stand out, not just the old, the old, ha, 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 fighting, fighting, knocking out, blah, blah, being a hero, blah, blah, blah. But something interesting and weird and off-center. Have you heard about stick work? I said, no. Well, here's what it is. You have to go learn it. Okay, so, so I had a month. And I went on and I learned how to spin a stick. And uh, it was a lot of fun. And uh, I, I knocked myself out almost literally twice. So Jeez. I was going to ask because the fight choreography in that movie is so amazing. You know, whether it's you guys going in there and taking down the casino, uh, you know, where Wayne Newton's at and Brackus is at. And then, you know, um, everything that you guys do throughout the film it's so well choreographed, especially the ending fight scenes when you go to the club and then Philip Rees out there doing his thing in what looks like the early stages of the UFC. So that's what I was saying is that this movie is so far ahead of its time and just so brilliant. And it was one of my go-tos. Actually, that one and Best of the Best Part 1 and 2. Now, we mentioned that I'm from Jersey. Last night, I put on the Pope of Greenwich Village, one of my favorites of all time. And being from that area... So many relatable characters. What was your experience, Eric, uh, on that film set with Mickey Rourke? It was fun every single day. Uh, it was, uh, I never broke character because I'm not from New York. And it's a, it's a beautiful accent. And if you if you don't do it perfect, all the New Yorkers will hate you. So, so I just <laughs> lived the part. 
and uh, and had a great time doing it. And uh, I can't buy a meal to this day in Little Italy. Yeah, they keep it <laughs> pretty. It's really funny. <laughs> Speaking of buying meals, when you're going through all the different sandwich shops, getting to meet the bread with Mickey, and you're talking about the horse, and what was it, artificial inspiration? Artificial I mean, inspiration. <laughs> This is one of the greatest scenes in the whole entire movie. Now, there's so many of them. The Charlie, they took my thumb is obvious. Cop shit his pants is probably one of the greatest scenes I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> Was that improvised? Vinnie Patrick is brilliant. I mean, it's all in the book. Uh, there, there, there's, there's a stuff that I made my own, but he gave me all the ammunition. And, uh, and you know, the only thing that I really changed was the uh, physicality of the character because he's supposed to be kind of a tough stupid kind of a thuggish guy <laughs> and i made him more of a mama's boy and i lost i lost 30 pounds and i burned my hair and i made him i like i like, want to be tough guy and uh and uh yeah it was it was just a blast every day it's a complete like difference between the best of the best and you know that's what you're so great with the versatility. And I love the little things you do with the characteristics when you're playing with the permed hair and everything like that. But there still is a sense of like that street guy, you know, that would be criminal. But at the end of the day, it's almost like very innocent, like a child, because the speech isn't good. Like when you're talking about the pink visa, you know, at the horse racing scene, and it's like, you know, it, there's so much charm to it. And that's how people relate to those characters. You did so many other great movies, man. Um, some of my favorites that stand out of all time, uh, It's My Party was excellent. You were fantastic in that film. Uh, great film, another very diverse role. And then you come back and you do some other things like Mercy Streets, which was a great, great indie film, man. Thanks, like, man. Yeah, dude. Like, I'm a huge fan, Eric. I'm not going to lie, dude. Um, and then you did The Expendables. Um, you know, another great sleeper movie is The Immortals. Chris Rock, William Forsythe. <laughs> You. What a cast. Good for you. I think so. I love that movie. I love I love the subject matter of that movie. I love that movie. It was very, you know, uniquely written and the whole, you know, plot about the people being sick and terminally ill and then you putting them out there on the streets to make money for yourself knowing they're going to die. I mean, come on guys, that's badass, dude. <laughs> that's what I got to go revisit. Because that's obviously, I think, one of my favorites. And then now we got to talk some of these other roles where Eric wasn't so nice. Star 80, oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, you know, that was a real guy. So I had, yes. I had limitations, I had an outline I had to follow, and I had to be true. And um, Bob Fosse was a great filmmaker, and he knew how to, how to I mean, he made Liza Minnelli brilliant. He's he's a brilliant filmmaker. He could not go wrong with me, and and he, and he didn't. No, you were phenomenal in that movie. If I'm not mistaken, I think even James Woods admitted that he stole some of like your vibe in that film for the, his role in Casino. Um, and you could kind of see it with the. I don't know if you ever heard that. I might be wrong, but I thought I heard it somewhere. Well, but I that, that. I I did, Jimmy, too. Jimmy and I are buddies. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Absolute great actor. And you actually did a film, The Specialist, with him. Yeah, we had a great time together. Me, he, and Rod had great talks. Yeah, I, and that great role there with Sylvester Stallone, who you worked with a couple times on The Expendables, obviously. Great film as well. And then more recently, you did The Dark Knight. That was fabulous. You know, another great performance. And again, showing tremendous versatility. King of the Gypsies, Runaway Train. Eric, I mean, the resume is outrageous, buddy. Um, I saw that in the past, what was it, 2020, you did 32 film appearances? I didn't I count. <laughs> I, I did, and that's amazing. What's that like to work so much? That's incredible. I'm gonna tell you a story, and then I'm gonna answer your question. In 1993, my wife says to me, Eric, if you could do anything every day of your life, what would it be? I, I told my wife I'd be on a movie set every day. My wife said, well, that's not going to happen. Then 2003 comes, and she goes, you know, people are buying their own cameras, and they're calling for you. So by 2010 or 12, 13, 14, 15, we, we were getting a dozen <coughs> offers a day from all over the world because everybody owned their own cameras. So everybody was their own, own movie studio. 
So I started traveling the whole world, making movies, having a great time. So, sometimes I was only in a movie, and sometimes I was a star of it. It all depended on the movie. But I just, I just started making three, four, five movies a week, 15 movies a month. Oh, my God, five movies a day. It, 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 got, <laughs> it, got, it got crazy fun. <laughs> You could tell you absolutely love it. And it's funny because I'm a huge fan. And then I'll find you in things that I had no idea you were in. For example, my girlfriend's a huge Grey's Anatomy's fan. Okay. <laughs> so whenever I go in the room where she's laying down and watching this thing, I'm like, you're watching Grey's Anatomy again. She's like, how can you tell? I'm like, because you're crying. Because yeah. you're so sad. And she, she loves it so very much. Right. And she's like, you know, Eric was actually on that show. I'm like, oh, no kidding. I'd like to see that. And I know you did a lot of television. C-16, by the way, when you did that, I thought that was an amazing show back in the day uh, with the FBI and all that kind of stuff. Speaking of shows, are you guys watching anything on television right now that you guys are enjoying? Well, I'm just hooked, hooked, hooked to the news. Uh, you know, and yeah. every morning I hear, you know, Governor Cuomo and uh, because okay. he's he's the one with the most brains talking about it right now. <laughs> you know, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, now I don't really watch TV. Now the wife, however, what 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 are you giving to watch the other day that I said thank you for? So he's so, something's got to give, which is the Diane oh, yeah. Keaton movie with Jack Nicholson. That's it, thirteen years I've been trying to get him to watch it. It's, it's seventeen <laughs> years old, and I just saw. Oh my god, what a fantastic movie! It's 17, or I think it is seventeen. Yeah, it's, I, it's a lot. It's old. He's he's watched a lot of the chick flicks with me during this time. I kind of he saw Love Actually. I mean, yeah, are you doing that with your with your girlfriend also? Yeah, we're watching a bunch of things, things that I like, the martial arts movies, the tough guy stuff, and then we'll watch you know the sensitive stuff and what the kid likes. And you know, we do TV shows. We're big fans of uh, Cobra Kai. We're waiting for that to come oh, back. Yeah. And this is this is in product placement, but this is just yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. well, do you yeah. guys watch that? Well, um, had, had, Michelle, uh, had music. Michelle Silverman, who's a good friend of ours, is the music supervisor. And she put a bunch of Keaton songs in Cobra Kai. So we watched awesome. for that reason. That was very cool. And that was cool for him because he's he's probably like around your age. So he, so his thing is, you know, he was like fans of those guys a long time ago. Yeah. And here they are on this show. So he really, I mean, he's had a lot of great placements, but he was excited about Cobra Kai. He's like, hey, mom, that's really cool. You know, I, yeah. I but we watched for that reason, of course. What else are you watching? We tried with Ozark, and I kind of liked it at first, but it got a little stale. Like, I like fast-paced shows. Like, Oz, Eric, you were actually on Oz. Yeah. Another tremendous performance. Um, I'm a big Sopranos fan, obviously, over here now. <laughs> Being, you know, originally from the East Coast and Italian. Um, but, you know, right now we're just doing throwback movies, going through things. Um, there's a couple series coming out. I'm a big cartoon guy. I like the Transformers. They got one coming out on Netflix. I'm looking forward to that. Um, we were just talking about music a moment ago. Um, and the Cobra Kai uh, soundtrack was excellent. I love the usage of Queen, the show must go on yes. in one of their episodes. I thought that was great. What kind of music do you like, Eric? I like rock and roll, rock and roll, rhythm and blues. And my favorite singer songwriter is Keaton Simons. Yeah, I was listening to some of his stuff, man. Very impressive. You must be very proud, guys. Uh, he knocked me out, dude. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, man. What about you, Eliza? What do you like? Well, in terms of music, I, you know, it's it's really the stuff probably from the early 70s that I that I really love. You know, it was always Joni Mitchell and James Taylor and all that and, you know, and all that stuff. Um, and it's interesting how some of that stuff does not in any way get old because we have a one year old grandchild. And so her mom's, which is our daughter and her wife, um, they every morning the baby picks a vinyl you know, one record and that's what they play. And they have their collections and their collections are from us, from th their parents. And it's Fleetwood Mac. I mean, it's this, it's, this is the same music. This, you know, this child was born in 2019. So here we are listening to the same stuff we were listening to in the sixties and seventies yeah. that, you know, good is good. I mean, that's it, it holds up. It holds up. Like for me, you know, I essentially a drummer and yep. I'm also a guitar player. My dad was a great jazz and blues guitar player and also rock and roll. So I like everything. I like reggae, uh, hard rock, uh, 80s rock, 70s rock, big Led Zeppelin fan, Rush, 
Toto. I just had Bobby Kimball from Toto on my show recently. Yeah, One of the, and he sang Africa on my show. I almost passed out. Oh, cool. That's fantastic. There used to be a show that you would love uh, called Don Kirshner's Rock Concert. Um, you know, you can ask your parents about that. Um, but yeah. um, and you can ask Toto about that because we had them on the show. So when I was a oh, kid, oh wow. Yeah, when yeah. I was a kid, I, I became talent coordinator on that show, and then I became the producer of the show. I was I was barely twenty years old. And the TD, weren't you? Yeah, you well, no, the technical director no, of I the booth. No, I wasn't the TD. I was the I but I I, I, right. I I was the boss of the TD. Uh -huh. <laughs> I hired the TD, but um, but I was in the booth because I was the I was the booth PA. That's mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Um, so uh, we had Toto on. I mean, like, it's amazing, these relationships. Like, we've all, all the generations of these people, we've stayed friends with them forever and ever. It's, it, you know, they don't, there's no such thing as really aging. I mean, they all feel like they're aging, but there's no such thing as really aging when it comes to music and having that talent at all. No, it holds up well. And I actually had Bobby do a track with me, uh, with my band, and he came into the studio. His yes. voice was so extremely powerful. Yeah, like, it was unbelievable how powerful this man's voice was. Yeah. And I had goosebumps. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Like, what's going on? And at the time, he was probably late 60s. Yeah. Eric, you're a big animal lover. I am, too. I have a chihuahua. I'll, I'll try to go get her in a second so you can yeah. see her. Right. Yeah. Dude. How many cats do you guys have? Four. Four. Awesome, we rescue. Buddy. We, like, really rescue like crazy. Yeah, they're all rescues. So, I'm very now I'm here. Animals get this this virus. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, cats get the oh, virus. No. What an inconvenience. <laughs> what an inconvenience, you know? I, I didn't know that. I didn't know animals could potentially get it. Sit tight a second, guys. I'm going to grab my little chihuahua so you can see hey, it. Oh, wow. I'll be okay. right back. All right, cool. Baby, where are you going? <laughs> what if I'm going to touch He's her? great. Yeah. I like how he has good tone as well. Just it feels like, like he, family. I feel like we've yeah. known him forever. I understand him when feeling he's like he's known you forever because you've seen your films, but usually that's not reciprocal. You know that is when people interview us and, and they know us, but we don't know them. But I feel like we know him back. I mean, he, not just from well, Twitter. He comes across like you're in your family. My family, yeah. yeah. He, he really does. Or, like, he, like, he'd do a great interview. Oh, uh, here we are. How old are we and what's our name? <clears throat> Her name is Polly and uh, she's a rescue. And uh, your cat's probably bigger than she is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can, can, can she hear me? Now she can. Go ahead, buddy. Oh, Polly. Polly, Polly, Polly. Polly, Polly, Polly. <laughs> Polly. Polly. She's yawning. You're putting yawning. her to sleep. Yeah, she was just taking a nap. She's probably pissed off at me right now because I just woke her up. She's, She's got a real hard life, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's so great. That, and so, and so your, your yeah. wife's daughter must adore her. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And when we got her from day one, like her personality just fit this family so good. Oh, and uh, right. yeah, yeah, they're all great together. And uh, my girlfriend's daughter, I was mentioning before, is 11 years old. Yeah. And uh, I was going to actually try to bring her on to say hello to you, Eric, because I think she's got a little crush on you. Oh, <laughs> That's refreshing. Usually he hears people come to him and go, my grandmother loves you. And he'll yeah. be like, oh, my God. But yeah, I love that. I know. I know. I love yeah, it's great. And we were talking about things holding up, music holding up, careers, uh, certain movies like the Pope of Greenwich Village holding up, best of the best two holding up. You're certainly holding up, brother. Like you're working so much. And I know that you were doing some movies uh, in uh, the current year. Like I had mentioned before, there was one that I know you were doing with Rosie Perez, who, by the way, is a huge boxing fan, and that's my favorite sport. And I'm going to ask you guys about sports in a moment. Inside the Rain, is there anything you want to talk about, about that film? Inside the Rain, uh, the reason that I made it was uh, it was a lot of fun for me, first of all. It was a fun part to play. And we love Rosie. Love. And we love Rosie. Yeah. And, uh, and, but it was, it was a subject matter. I think it's important because supposedly 20% of everybody out there is on a psychotropic drug. Prozac, Buspar, whatever it is, but they're on so, <coughs> so, something to help balance it out. And uh, so I think it's an important subject. Uh, since so many people are on them, let's talk about them. Uh, I was on psychotropics for close to six years off and on, and uh, it did not work for me, it did not work at all. For me, it was like being trapped in a phone booth on cocaine. It was wow. out. Yeah, it was, it was bad. Sounds awful. Yeah, I was I was having a Zoom meeting with some friends from back home in Jersey the other day, and they're talking about some things that they're taking. And I, some of these things I've never heard of. I'm like, guys, 
take some CBD or just, you know, figure yeah. out something else, man. Like, I'm like, what the hell is this thing now? No, you know? You're right. You should, you know, I hope they listen to you. They won't, but it'd be nice if they did. Yeah, man. You know, I, cause I, I, get, I worry about people, especially now, like I said, we're holding up cause we're a good functioning family. Like yourself, you guys are happy, you're healthy, but you know, unfortunately during these times we have people that aren't. And I tell everyone this, like find the passions that you love. Like, you know, I go back and watch old boxing matches. Like I mentioned how Rosie Perez is a huge box. She's like the first lady of boxing, right. you know, and she knows her stuff. And whenever she's doing like, you know, commentating, she's wonderful. Uh, do you guys like sports? What sports do you guys follow? Uh, I like all sports pretty much. Uh, but he I'm a football. pro football groupie. I've got, I've got several teams I love and follow. And I just love pro football. I love, I love the game. I love the, uh, the uh, careers. I love... It's so much like show business. It's heartbreaking because you're only good when you're scoring, you know, and uh, that's, that's when they pay you big, you know, and uh, when you when you bring in the crowds, they pay you, and when you don't, they won't. It's as simple as that. Yeah. I'm really interested in seeing how the sports world moves forward because I know a lot of people are doing studio productions like the UFC just did, the WWE. Um, I'm a big boxing fan, so I know that they're trying to think about doing the same thing. And they're talking about, like, crowdless football games. I'm interested in seeing how that works. I think just like in movies, Eric, you know about this. It's all about the way the camera is shot. So I think if they shoot it the right way where you're not taking in all that environment, they can make the, uh, the viewer engaged. Like, what we're doing now is hitting the reset button. Well, they're going to have to go closed circuit. They're going to have to make it an event like a paid-for boxing where you show up and you watch the game from every angle you want to see it, blah, blah. It's going to have to be special. And, it, and it's going to cost us and yeah. it's going to cost us convenience and it's going to, but it's, it'll, it'll, it'll save our lives. And that's, that's the point. Yeah. Entertainment. Yep. yep. That, yeah. That's going to be a giant reset, but same thing with concerts. Cause Keaton's been touring with Brett Young and those are stadium, it was arena um, appearances. They were sold out in stadiums, dude. They brought them home. Oh my God. Yeah. And so it's can awesome. you go back to that? It's, it's funny because that was the criteria for success five minutes ago was how many people you can jam into one space. Now it's almost like the criteria for success is how comfortable you can be having nobody there. Right. Yeah. Um, and get motivated and get motivated. Damn. Yeah. You can see yeah, on the late night shows fun. without the laughs, like when SNL has been doing it, I'm sure you've been watching, you know, without the laughs, cause you know, you want to internally be able to generate, but that feedback is so important. And when it's what any performance. And so it's very interesting to kind of do without that. It's where you right. feel, you know, naked. I could not agree more, especially if you're a fighter. You're coming in, you play off the crowd, you got your music popping off, yeah. and you're pumped up, and then it's just like, you know, ding, ding, and it's just quiet. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's really weird. You would know where the Italian stallion came from, don't you? Which one? Italian stallion. Uh, from a slice alone. You know where it came from, don't you? The Italian stallion? Yeah. He I don't, played, Eric. He played a part in a porn movie, and he was called Italian Stallion, and he made love to a girl in a bathtub. I've actually seen the movie, it's far out. But uh, <laughs> yeah. so he took that from the porn and he put it in Rocky. And uh, you, you, can, you can quote me on that, because it's true. That is absolutely great information. I heard something along those lines, but I wasn't really quite sure. That's no, no. fantastic. This makes this shirt even more special now. <laughs> it's, a, it's a true story. He and I had a conversation about it. It's a true story. You worked with Stallone a couple times. It's some great cast on The Expendables and the specialist too. Stallone has a knack for great casting. Huh? I mean, who does his casting? Do you know, Eric? Because you worked with him a couple times, obviously. Well, there are people with their names on the on the casting card, but you know, Stallone you know, does and gets what Stallone wants. And <laughs> it's simple as that. You know, Stallone is your know, Rocky Rambo, and I'm gonna work with so and so. He works with so and so. It's not a big deal. <laughs> it's just how it works. The last Rambo might have been the most violent movie I've ever seen. Did you guys see that one? I saw it. Not it, me. It, it, it was because of the violence. It was. It was probably the most violent thing ever shot. <laughs> it was. I could not believe when it took that turn. I don't want to give any spoilers out for the listeners, but it took a turn. Uh, Eric, you saw the movie. I'm sure you, yeah. you know what I'm talking about. Where I was just like, you "Oh, said, they." We uh, can't talk violence in front of her. She has <laughs> yeah. violent phobia. Yeah, no, no worries. But I was like, it took a turn. And I was like, oh, my God, I didn't expect him to go there. So I wasn't going to go there because of, I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> so but what I, do you guys? Yeah, go ahead. Speaking of Sly, I love the guy. He's one of the 
smartest, funniest, most fun guys to hang out with on the planet. And, you know, he's a bit of a genius, dude. It's very smart. Yeah. I, and, and I think you are too, Eric. You know, I hear you in many interviews over the years, you know, talking about many different topics, just like you're acting very diversified, very, you know, um, eclectic, and there's a lot going on with your knowledge of things. Um, so I want to ask you before I let you guys go, what started you off wanting to act and you know, what, where, where, where did you study and what was your inspirations coming up as an actor? As a little bitty child, I had a terrible stutter and I discovered when I memorized things, I could talk without stuttering. So it became a cheat at first. I would like, I would like count the kids in class and I would count the lines and I would learn mine. And then I'd memorize it and say it well. And if anybody messed up and had to get skipped, I would have to stutter through this painful thing. So it became kind of like speech therapy at first. And then it became fun. Then I became good at it. Then I realized I could get really good at this because I understood what it was to, to uh, be somebody else. So, so, and I just, I just really pursued it and uh, got lucky because that's really in the end result, um, not unlike athletics, in the end result, you can be phenomenal, but if you don't get the, uh, the format to show it, it does not matter. And uh, so you have to get lucky to get that format because you know, people don't give you things because, oh, you deserve it. That doesn't happen. And uh, it's unfortunate, but you know, we get over that when we get through adolescence, but it's unfortunate, but that's not how it works. So I got lucky. And I thank my lucky stars every day while I shave for my wife, my horse, my kid, and my career, pretty much in that order. Wow, that was so wonderfully said, man. I got goosebumps. I'm about to go out there and start doing some stuff today, man. <laughs> it's setting on fire. That is so well said, Eric. And you talk about lucky. I'm lucky to have this friendship and relationship with you guys. It's not every day that someone is fortunate enough to interview you know, some of their favorite people that you admire, such as yourself and your wife, like, you know, it's, I cannot tell you how grateful I am for this amazing, amazing experience, Eric. You're one of my favorite actors of all time, you know, and right there, brother, you know, and Eliza, thank you for putting this all together. Guys, I'm gonna let you get to your day. What are you guys doing, by the way, today? Well, we were actually, we, we were looking forward to this interview. He did an interview with um, about Inside the Rain with the UK. Yeah. And we've got a few more of those. But we're doing like what everybody's doing, we're reorganizing closets and trying to catch up and <laughs> you know, all the stuff that – and somehow, you know, when things start up again, no matter what that looks like, we're still not going to be in any way caught up. <laughs> but right. Never. Skype calls, you know. Yep, yeah, the same the same as everyone else. We're doing the same thing, cleaning up everything. I don't think, you know, my house ever looks so tidy. And uh, all my paperwork is organized, you know. Totally, totally. We're going to redo the bookshelves by category. I mean, you know, just all this stuff that in a million years you'd never think of. And we're always looking for ways to help. You know, we have a lot of friends, Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Hillary Burton and stuff, who are doing involved in all kinds of programs to help. So we're doing a lot of that, too, whatever we can. In fact, you speak, speaking of Jeffrey Dean Morgan, he's why I'm with her. Are you want to wow. hear a story? Yes, please. So it was nine. What was it? Nineteen eighty-nine ish. I get her phone number from her on a plane. I get to L.A. and I call her, and a man answers the phone. Hello, very deep voice. I say, "May I speak to Eliza?" Man, she's calling. Would you tell her it's Eric? Just a minute, please. He goes away. I think, oh, this is shame. She got a boyfriend. Oh well. <laughs> anyway, he goes to her and he goes, "There's an Eric on the phone for you." She goes, I don't know an Eric. We had, we had just met. I don't know an Eric. Well, it sounds like Eric Roberts, Jeffrey Dean Morgan says, oh, I met him on a plane. She takes the call. If she hadn't taken that call, <laughs> I would not have called back. Wow. Yeah, I, I called her once, didn't work out, and I'm moving on. But, you know, but <laughs> Jeffrey Dean Morgan, I owe him this relationship. Yeah, but you have to going there answering my phone. Oh, he, he was <laughs> crashing on her couch because he was broke and unemployed. <laughs> yeah, he's ba actually, wow. he's babysitting for my kids while I was in New York. <laughs> yeah, that's a great story. And you guys obviously are meant to be together. I mean, you know, you could tell when 
you know, real recognizes real. And I know what real true love is. And I can see that you guys really, truly love each other. And that's one of the things that stood out even to my girlfriend when she was watching you again on Ridiculousness talk about, you know, your film career. You know, he had asked you, the host had asked you about, you know, your love for movies. You're like, yeah, I love movies. Like, I love my wife every day. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you couldn't think of any movies. <laughs> <laughs> guys, I can't, I can't thank you enough. The show will be up within a few hours, guys. Thank you, guys. And next time we have to meet the rest of your family, okay? Yes, no one's home right now. I would love to have bring you, brought them in. And like I said, my stepdaughter, she's a little shy, but she'll come around. Okay. And when you talk Not to her, she has a huge personality. Don't get the virus. Yeah. Absolutely. We're going to stay strong. We're taking the vitamins, washing our hands. <laughs> Good. Yeah, Good. Guys, stay safe. I appreciate you so much. Of course. This Peace was out. fun. See Peace you. Peace out. Much Bye. love. This is great. Thank you.